Well, George Soros has denied that he controls prosecutors like Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg, as Republicans would have you believe. He has spoken out about why he supports progressive prosecutors. In a Wall Street Journal op-ed last year, Soros wrote, quote, in recent years, reform-minded prosecutors and other law enforcement officials around the country have been coalescing around an agenda that promises to be more effective and just. This agenda includes prioritizing the resources of the criminal justice system to protect people against violent crime. It urges that we treat drug addiction as a disease, not a crime, and it seeks to end the criminalization of poverty and mental illness. This agenda, aiming at both safety and justice, is based on common sense and evidence. It is popular. It is effective. Joining me now is Rashad Robinson, president of Color of Change, and Kurt Bardella, Democratic strategist and contributor to the Los Angeles Times and USA Today. Um, Rashad, th that agenda from George Soros sounds super duper evil, you know, maybe mm -hmm. treating, you know, poverty as, as something other than a crime. I would love for you to just talk. I'm going to let you talk about the relationship that Color of Change has with George Soros and why you think that he funds your organization and others. Well, we're funded by many folks around the country who want to support racial justice, who believe in a world where we can advance um, safety um, and justice in communities, where we can create more equitable economy, where we can make systems work for everyone, a more human and less hostile world. And that's what we've been fighting for. And George Soros is one of our um, many donors. Um, but these attacks that we that pop up every so often and and over the last several weeks, um, as uh, Donald Trump has been facing the consequences of his actions, um, actions that um, as he faces them, um, he begins to talk about how the criminal justice system isn't for people like him. Well, the reform-minded prosecutors that we have been supporting around the country have been working to make sure that. Um, the rich and the powerful actually have to pay the, the price when they step outside the law, that we actually have deeper fairness, that communities actually have more power and more um, input in how um, they are sort of treated by the justice system. That is what we're doing. But there are some that believe that jail and prison is only for black and brown people. And, you know, we're happy to have the support of folks. But I've got to say that these attacks over the last several weeks have been really hard on our organization. Donald Trump has named us by name in a, in a post on his own social media platform. And we have had to put resources into security, have had to deal with these attacks. It can also sometimes be a kind of a silent distancing that donors and other people have. Um, and so the thing I also want to say to folks who are watching, who actually believe that um, we should have a justice system that is fair and equitable, that people should um, be able to get a fair trial in this country, that the, the playing field needs to be more fair when we think about all of these issues, that they actually have to support reform-minded prosecutors, who in so yeah. many places around the country are actually holding the line for our democracy. And if we believe that someone like Donald Trump actually should be accountable and have consequences, then we have to support the people that do it. But we also have to stand with racial justice and civil rights organizations like mine when we come under attack for it. Because yeah. what they're trying to do is make us step further away from the work that we are trying to do every day to fight for a better tomorrow for all of us. Because when black people and black communities win in our country, we make society work for everyone. Yeah, I mean, Kurt, the reality is what they're trying to argue is that Donald Trump facing the same system of justice that anyone else who did what he did faces, that that is the actual discrimination. But that also the other part of their argument, Alvin Bragg needs to be locking up more black people. Right. I mean, that's the undercurrent of their argument. Right. Well, even when you look at the the attacks they use, using George Soros as this prop, as this, you know, behind the curtain figure, you're basically also saying that someone like Alvin Bragg can't make his own decisions. Right. That he's a puppet master. You know, someone else is controlling his strings, which is inherently a racist type of connotation to say that a black prosecutor can't be trusted because a Jewish donor is controlling him. That is ridiculous. It is both racist and anti-Semitic at the same time. And oh, by the way, let me just point this out. 
Alvin Bragg isn't flying around on private jets going to private islands with mega donors, you know, the way that Clarence Thomas has been doing right. for and years. They would be very offended if we were to say that Clarence Thomas is controlled like a puppet by the guy who was flying him all over the world, maybe influencing his decisions. And I just want to point out, and you've been in both, the, both politics in both parties, there are lots of donors. The Shelley Adelson, Peter, Th Peter Thiel, uh, Miriam Adelson, Stephen Wynn. I could go on. The Koch brothers. Oh, yeah. And the right gets real offended if you try to say that that money has influence. But we know in this, you know, mm -hmm. the way that the Supreme Court has allowed things to operate in the Citizens United world, we see that influence. Right. Soros' influence is to make, try to make the world more democratic. Right. Small I mean, D. It's interesting because I don't see Soros playing the same hands-on role that you see from the Koch brothers, from uh, Steve Wynn, who was the finance chair of the Republican, uh, the RNC in the last cycle. I don't see uh, <laughs> George Soros, again, taking Supreme Court justices on private trips and whining and dining them all over the world right. and doing these things that have just come out. It's like, why is there a separate system of ethics yeah. that Republicans want for someone like Alvin Bragg than their own Supreme Court justice and Clarence Thomas? Yeah. We, we, I don't see them blowing the whistle on the Federal Society and Better how deal. there has been an organized effort to fund right-wing judges right. and put them in office for years now. So, again... Republicans want to have Different their cake rules. and eat it, too. Last word to you, Rashad Robinson. Uh, what can folks do if they want to support what you all are doing? Because I think having progressive prosecutors actually sounds like something most people want. Well, all around the country right now, we are working not only to, to push for progressive prosecutors, but then to hold them accountable, to engage with their communities, to do things like court watch so we support the type of changes that we want to engage. We've also done something like release a, a kind of a platform that's on colorofchange.org, which is a platform about how do we yeah. think about investments in our communities beyond policing, a larger vision for public safety. This is yep. all part of the work that needs to happen. And folks can yep. join us at Color of Change and support it. And know that the attacks that we are facing are coordinated because there are people who believe that jail and prison are only for certain yep. people. And there are other yep. folks that get to fly above the law and face no consequences. Yeah. And we should and we see it. We see, we see what y'all are doing. Uh, Rashad Robinson, Kurt Mardella, thank you both.